For many of us, a holiday can be a chance to relax and not do much. But for a growing number of Australians, the annual break is being turned into a chance to work. And they're prepared to pay for it. Conservation tourism is on the rise and holiday makers are picking up where governments have left off. Alison Horn reports. On approach, Gloucester Island in the Whit Sundays looks like the perfect spot for some R&R. At the moment we're, we're heading towards Bona Bay, which is a, a national park campground. But despite first appearances, this group already exploring the foreshore isn't looking for laid back. Well, we believe um, in experiential learning, so um, getting people to help um, protect environments um, that are in danger. I think that the real reason I came out here was simply because I could actually do something that is, well, that, that makes a little bit of an impact. I don't think it's weird to come and pay and, and pull out weeds, but that's because that's why I'm here. <laughs> we'll take the hill. Let's go find some rubber vine. These tourists have paid hundreds of dollars to join not-for-profit group Wild Mob on a working holiday. Today, the group is hunting down a noxious weed. Hey, these look like the leaves. Oh, yeah. What do you got there? Yeah, I reckon this is rubber vine. It's got the purple... The volunteers chop and poison so that native plants have a chance. For Kelly Anderson, it's a world away from her daily grind as an office worker in inner Sydney. So that's the distance education course that you're looking at? The life's pretty busy living in the city. There are people everywhere. We've always got competing deadlines uh, at work and at home, you know, trying to fit everything in. But she doesn't mind being put to work in the bush. You know, you come away from the holiday not just relaxed, but also feeling like you've done something positive. I think this is something that will really catch on. People will see that they can actually go away, they can you know, be able to contribute something that they can walk away from and feel proud of. Over the last five years, a spike in demand has seen dozens of groups set up to cater for conservation tourism. The research is indicating that people are wanting immersive experiences. They don't want to come to a holiday destination and just take a photo and say that that was their holiday. They want experiences that um, enable them to feel part of the destination. You know, we take school trips um, now, we or even take universities, um, subjects now that we've developed um, through starting out taking volunteers to different places. The tourists camp in tents. There's no showers, a compost toilet and all meals are made by the group. Some people have sort of said, why would you go away for a week and go out bush and be uncomfortable? You don't even get to have showers and all that sort of thing. But it's, it's the way we're kind of meant to live. And we haven't seen a, a wallaby yet, a proserpine rock wallaby yet, so we're going to be putting out these motion cameras. The team is also working with the Queensland Government to monitor animals on the island, setting up these motion-activated cameras to keep track of endangered rock wallaby numbers. Uh, maybe get some sticks from around so we can pack it up. The work is approved by national parks and supervised by trained environmental experts. I've got an ecology background and conservation biology, so um, I know most of the species around. Within hours, their efforts pay off. The government have their priorities, um, and there's a lot of islands up here that need protection, and if the government can't do it, I think the onus is back on people like us. I think we've moved way out of the years of governments being responsible. And I think now it's, we've got to a point where, for myself personally, um, we have to sort of take the responsibility ourselves and um, use our own initiative and in some cases our own finances. Some people get a little bit of anxiety from not having all their, you know, iPads and iPhones and and um, that sort of technology, but by the end of it, they're just like, wow, that's great, I, I don't need to 
and they, they sort of want to stay. Yeah. <laughs> and there is some time to play. See ya. See ya. So we'll spend the afternoon just relaxing. And then tomorrow morning we'll do it all over again. Ensuring they take home some blisters along with the memories and leave more than footprints on the island. <laughs> it's something that I would definitely jump onto again. Uh, it's a great way of exploring our country. This kind of a holiday, you don't forget it. You, know, you meet some great like-minded people. You, you can say that you've made a difference in part of the world.